Hey folks, uh, Pastor Bruce joining you again, and today we're going to look at uh, John chapter 15. And um, do you give much thought to bearing fruit in your spiritual life? I don't think many of us think about that very much. And um, that's probably for a lot of reasons, but uh, maybe one reason is that um, we find it difficult. <laughs> we we um, we find it difficult to love in ways that are self-sacrificing, um, especially at the end of the day when we're all tired and hungry and irritated. Um, and it doesn't seem like a, a lot of fruit is is being born. <laughs> um, but another reason I think why we struggle with thinking about and just simply bearing fruit is because uh, we think wrongly about it. Um, this has to be, uh, and when I say wrongly about it, when we think wrongly about bearing fruit, when we think that it's it's our job to coax something within us to come out in ways that would be God honoring. And that's, um, in other words, it's left in your hands, in your lap, uh, your responsibility. And that's simply not the case. And I think if we have a better perspective of uh, bearing fruit and the relationship that it has with a very important concept that um, we would feel much better about it and look forward to bearing fruit instead of um, sort of setting it aside and not giving it much thought. So let's take a look at this and see what is bearing fruit related to and how is it related, all right? So... Here in John 15, Jesus is telling the story about the, the vine and the branches. And he starts off by, by saying, I am the true vine. There is no other vine. This is the true vine. If you're looking to plug in elsewhere, you're not going to find the... Um, sustenance, the nutrients, the life that you need, um, because it's not the true vine. We need the true vine. So I, Jesus, am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. And every branch in me, this would be us, um, this would be people, I guess. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he, the vine dresser, the father, takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes. He being the father, he prunes. Now this word prunes, um, we normally associate that. I think it, if we if I asked you what do you think this is, pruning, you'd say, um, I'm not sure what it is, but I'm sure it hurts. <laughs> um, well, um, trees do not have nerves, as far as I know, like you and I have nerves. So God is not going around uh, cutting things off our bodies um, in the way that a vine dresser would prune a, a vine. Um, so I don't think we necessarily need to think of this as pain, though certainly God, we learn a lot about trusting God in times of pain, in times of suffering. But here this, this word actually is the same word as this word found in the next verse that's translated clean. And in fact, it's translated clean in another passage Back in John chapter 13, where Jesus is washing the disciples' feet, 
And he says this. Let's jump to it real quick. Um, John 13, 10. Jesus said to them, The one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you. And of course, he's referring to Judas um, that he makes explicit in the next verse. Um, so what can we gather from this, the way this is being used? Um, they, they need their feet washed. They don't need a complete wash because they are completely clean. That is a fact, a true statement, because of the work of Christ in the disciples' life. Now, of course, we know Judas is the betrayer. He's the one that um, doesn't move toward Christ. He moves away from Christ. And so he is one of these that does not bear fruit. He is one of these that is not clean. So this cleansing um, could be the... Um, the work, the potential work, the future work, or the past work of salvation uh, for the disciples. Um, I'm assuming that uh, future work in their life, um, but certainly they are Christ's, and Christ isn't going to let them go. They've been given to Christ from the Father, and he will hold on to them and will not let any of them go. So I think that's what's going on here. Um, but Judas, Judas is not one of those. And he ends up suffering the consequence. He, he was not saved in the end, where the other disciples were saved. So just like uh, in John 13, um, where the disciples were clean and just needed their feet washed, so here, you are already clean. You are already clean. Um, and yet, you need cleaning, pruning. We could possibly think of this as um, salvation and this as uh, sanctification, that ongoing work of salvation in our lives that work of the Father to prune us. Um, already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. So, I think we could write a big so here, or a big therefore, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit, by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Now we have this so, this therefore, this um, inference from the truth that is up here. Jesus is the vine. We need to be attached to the vine to bear fruit. That branch is pruned from the Father, um, and we have already been made clean because of the word that was spoken to us. Therefore, do not, do not seek other vines. Do not look elsewhere. Abide. This is the word remain. Um, some translations might use that word remain. Uh, stay where you are. Stay connected to the vine. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch, here's, here's giving us a reason why. The branch cannot bear fruit unless it abides in the vine. And then the parallel being applied to us, you cannot bear fruit unless you abide in me. So he goes on. I, oh, let me just say one more thing. This word abide is the only command here. There's no command to bear fruit. Isn't that interesting? The command is to abide, to stay, to remain, to 
to stay connected to the true vine. Rest in him, in your relationship with him. This abide in me and I in you, this reciprocal relationship. Uh, rest in that. Think about that. Remember that. Meditate on that. Think about all the implications of what it means for you as a branch to be connected to the true vine. For Christ to be in you and for you to be in Christ. Abide there. Right? Verse 5. I am the I am the vine. He's just clarifying his identity as the vine. You are the branches. He's just clarifying our identity as branches. And never get them swapped. When you start thinking of yourself as the vine, the one who has the sustenance and nutrients to produce fruit, you are in deep trouble. If you think that fruit is coming from some source of strength within you, uh, you're in the danger zone. So he wants you to remember who is the vine and who is the branches. Who are the branches? Then he says this, whoever abides, whoever is abiding, this is a participle, whoever is abiding, you're, it's a continuing present tense participle, so this action is a continuing relationship. Whoever is abiding in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. Now, think about how this is structured. We have the main verb here, bears. And we have this participle, abides. And he is saying that it is he that bears much fruit. Well, who is the one bearing much fruit? Whoever abides. Whoever remains. That's why he's commanding us to remain, to stay. Stay connected. Abide. Remain. Whoever abides bears. See that connection? In your abiding, in your ongoing abiding, resting in, knowing and appreciating and, and, and taking in and um, treasuring the connection you have with the true vine, that it came about not because you're special. It, became, it came about because... He is special, and he, as the true vine, reached out to you to include you as one of the branches, feeble as we are. When we take that in, when we abide in the wonder that Christ loves us, what happens? We bear fruit. It's what happens when we abide. So the call is not to bear fruit. The call is to abide because it's in the abiding that fruit comes. You don't have to do something special for the grapevine to produce grapes. It just needs to be attached to the vine. You detach it, it no longer produces fruit. You, and if it's attached, it produces fruit quite naturally. It's what vines, it's what branches do. The same is true of you. Abide in him. Abide in Jesus and know that Jesus abides in you. Know that. And in knowing that, 
treasuring that, valuing that, being knocked off your feet by that truth, you will produce much fruit. So you struggle with producing fruit. You don't like to think about producing fruit because it's hard. Don't focus on producing fruit. Focus on abiding in Christ. You are a branch who is meant to be attached to the true vine. Stay there. Abide. Remain with your connection with Jesus Christ. Well, I hope to see you next time.